Okay, thank you both for coming. I see a lot of familiar persons uh, that are watching us through stream. Uh, I hope that we overcome uh, these technical, uh, technical problems. So I will present you uh, how in the first place we, we got here and what we have applied in, in the study of, uh, of history and earns. But uh, before going there, I always have to mention that uh, Gorjanovic Kramberger put uh, Croatia on map on, of paleoradiology rather early in 1901. He was the first to scan uh, fossilized remains of uh, Neanderthal men in Zagreb and not in Vienna, as it's written in paleoradiological uh, literature. So to explain you what uh, biopsies are, uh, it is something that we use uh, in everyday clinical uh, clinical work uh, at the radiology department. Uh, I am working as a clinical radiologist at University Hospital Center of Zagreb. So when we choose a target lesion, we get this coaxial needle uh, and insert a needle for sampling and we get this cylinder of bone sample, which is, uh, which is important uh, for us to get the uh, information about pathology. Uh, something different can be used in paleoradiology. This is a mummified head from a Zagreb uh, Archaeological Museum. Uh, so we use this grid uh, to be oriented in vertical uh, line and CT orients you in horizontal line. Afterwards we get uh, one needle that is uh, placed inside and if the position isn't right Every time we exit the room to control our uh, position under the under the CT, and we can correct the position on the sample itself. When we are happy with the position, we use the drill to get the uh, sample. So this is the sample from uh, head number three, and it was used for uh, C14 and maybe stable isotope analysis. Well, when you transfer your data from clinical radiology to paleoradiology, you can get some problems. So this is how we got stuck in our sample and this is Patrick who is trying to extract it. And we have, <laughs> we have received it uh, finally. Gotcha. Then again inserted uh, a smaller needle inside of it. So you see, it can be pretty challenging. But at the end, we got our sample out. Anyway, I have an idea. Sorry. So we finally <laughs> got it. We <laughs> got it out. Uh, and you see how uh, small the sample is. So. Uh, it's still under the tenth of, uh, of a gram. Uh, here I would like to present you the next thing we did. This is Mario's uh, sample from Middle Ages near Iraq. We can clearly see, uh, based only on x-ray, that is osteochondroma uh, of, uh, uh, near uh, the head of the fibula. And we can do all sorts of reconstructions on, on CT. And here we have images uh, that uh, Igor, uh, Igor has done on uh, Faculty of Medicine with the resolution of 18 micrometers with this uh, final, uh, final reconstruction. So the same principle is used here. We insert the coaxial needle and with another needle we take here we have one centimeter, two centimeters. So what is the benefit? The benefit is to minimize the damage of surrounding tissues because we can uh, we can follow uh, the damage afterwards on the CT and we know all, in any time we know this position from where we are getting the sample. Again, problem here is that is only powder. But for a good pathologist, it is uh, not a problem and we can follow the path of the needle afterwards. It's not a problem, so he gets, Professor Seibert gets the uh, PhD uh, diagnosis uh, with, he 
did approve a chondroid, uh, chondroid cells. So it's definitely osteochondroma without malignant, malignant transformation. So I can show you other uh, uh, sampling that was done using the, the CT. Uh, using the CT, we uh, oriented to get this tooth out. You can see the uh, working uh, in situ. And again, here we can find out which part of the tooth we have uh, taken out. This was our paleoradiological workshop in 2019. Uh, so already two years have, have passed. So you can see, if you compare this image here with this, that it's clearly uh, that we can position ourselves more easily with, with CT than do it only uh, on, on, with uh, with um, uh, biomaterial because it's all uh, changed due to the resin and taphonomic changes and and so on <laughs> and these are the results that we got of C14 from from this uh, from these samples. Uh, this is a mummified cat from archaeological museum in Zagreb. I think Fabio recognized his work. <laughs> this is reconstruction on uh, on his on his software. This is uh, cat's uh, femur. This is post mortal post mortal damage, and we wanted again to take a sample from uh, from femur. We we should we have chosen this part here, and again we put the grid. So grid gives you ver vertical orientation, and CT gives you horizontal uh, orientation. We have aimed this femur here. So you calculate yourself uh, the uh, angle through which you enter. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the sixth. Always the first one is a little bit wider. One, two, three, four, five, six. And where these lines crosses, this is the entry point for, for the CT biopsy. I put an arrow. And Again, we position ourselves in the, uh, where we want to be. Another check, so we are right at the place, and afterwards we can follow the path of the needle. So to give you the uh, 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 an idea of, of uh, how how big this is, this is only two centimeters. So it's really hard to uh, get in the right position without damaging of all this. Uh, surrounding surrounding structures, and again we got only 0 0.07 grams of, of material because this bone, as taphonomic uh, uh, tells us, it changes after after the, the, the death, and, and we have two two thousand years of. This is one uh, megalodon tooth from a private collection. So this was, uh, this was uh, not done by me, but it was in, in the past. And we tried to, to get a sample, but we, were, we weren't uh, successful. It is just too, too hard to, to, to get inside. Do you consider switching to orthopedic <laughs> practice? <laughs> Well, orthopedic uh, uh, cannot be called uh, minimal invasive. <laughs> Here I thought uh, I could do it afterwards, but... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so what we have uh, get it's 0 0.02, which is practically not uh, not usable yet for for anything. So we are, we are switching to towards the uh, uh, we are switching to uh, urns from uh, from site just few meters down. If I got it well, huh? There. there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there is a lot of material we scanned. Uh, we scanned over twenty urns, if I'm right, Maya. Eh? Yeah. Uh, but I will present you two cases in which we have placed 
biopsy needles in order to uh, make easier the micro, micro excavation. Uh, I think micro excavations are going on right now. If I'm right, so maybe you know, on next congress we will yeah, we will show it. I, I'm doing it. Ah, okay, great. So maybe we can show uh, what you have excavated uh, in in uh, next in next lecture where we combine all, all all the stuff. So maybe just to show you the procedure of CT guided biopsy. So again, we have this grid which uh, as i said is used for vertical alignment here is horizontal alignment and this is how it looks like when we get the image inside uh, these urns are very different from urns that we worked on before or, or from late bronze ages they are uh, filled filled with skeletal remains and maybe a little bit richer in metal filings than those from Bronze Age, at least what we had from a Baritz uh, 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 culture. So this is a 3D reconstruction with these metal uh, objects that we were trying to mark in order to uh, uh, make more easier the excavation for, for the archaeologists. So uh, again, you count the spaces and you insert the middle. So when you hit hard, you know that you are close to the metal, or you can go slow by slow and and check every every step you make. So these are the reconstruction of the uh, these metal uh, metal elements. We will see them afterwards uh, when excavation is done. How they really uh, look like and what they are. Uh, and these are the steps again by uh, in which we are moving towards this uh, uh, more deep deep object inside inside this urn if and here here is where we position it uh, right so uh, to show you for how this uh, uh, procedure looks like uh, virtually you can remove virtually all the layers until you get only metal metal artifacts see here is one needle that marks the position and here is the other one. Uh, the other example is again we have uh, we have the grid. Uh, we 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 think uh, that metal elements are at the bottom. This is another reconstruction, volume rendering reconstruction of metal elements, and this is after the insertion. So we had to enter through a certain angle. Here we are marking at this part here, and this is the reconstruction with the needle and the view from from above. So this was a quick overview of biopsy of uh, history and history and urns, and this is commercial for the next <laughs> radiological <laughs> workshop. So uh, whoever is interested, uh, take a notice in your calendar. One year. In, uh, in before and two years maybe if we're lucky we will do it uh, this conference in in two weeks okay i thank you uh and i'm open for, for questions okay or, or maybe i wasn't so clear that this, these are urns from from iron age uh, population of history uh maybe or prehistory history right? History and history. history. Which you cannot say that they're Illyrians because then the archaeologists are very uh, upset. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, I don't know, maybe we, maybe we will be able to do um, AMS on the bones. We just need to open everything and see. Yeah, so no problem. We will, we will, we will know exactly uh, this century at least. But the uh, basic of the Pottery is some 7th, 8th century BC.